Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to another episode of Follow Your Path. My name is Abdul Abid. I'm a surgical pathology fellow at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. And today we are excited to be talking to Dr. Monica Pagano. She is an assistant professor of pathology at the University of Washington. And she's also the medical director of the Transfusion uh, Service. And we are also joined today by a junior resident, Zoon Tariq. Welcome to the show, Dr. Pagano. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. And I'm thrilled to, to answer questions today. So uh, starting off, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, where you went to medical school and did your residency? Yes, absolutely. So um, I was born and raised and also did medical school in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I have to warn you, my, my, my path to transfusion medicine was not a straight line. Uh, there were many, many different aspects and, 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 and different roads that I took to arrive to this point. So um, after finishing medical school, I did do an internal medicine residency as, as, as well in Buenos Aires. And that kind of gave me the clue that I wanted to do something related to, um, in addition to clinical practice, something related to the lab. I, re I really wanted to do not only clinical, but something more related to either research or uh, related to immunology. So I relocated to the state and I did a, a research uh, in a mouse model of inflammation at WashU, uh, Washington University in St. Louis. And we were looking at complement activation and and how uh, neutrophils and complement interact. And at some point during these five years of research, I learned about cell therapy because we were doing bone marrow transplant to these mice, just looking where the cells were coming and, and, and going and, and activating and so on. And, and when I learned so much how, I mean, when I learned how much um, all the cell therapy field was growing and expanding and how we can use cells for therapeutic purposes, I became interested in transfusion medicine and cell therapy. And I learned about this pathway. And I said, hey, it seems that looks like transfusion medicine could be this nice spot between you know, what you see on patients and clinical practice and the lab. And, and that got me interested in clinical pathology and transfusion medicine. And where did you end up doing your residency then? So after five years of, 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 of research, I relocated to Seattle and I did my clinical pathology residency at the University of Washington. Mm -hmm. um, those three years were great, actually. I learned a, a lot about, I did have my clinical background, but I didn't know anything about the lab. It is amazing how little we know about the lab. And not only I realized that I didn't know anything about the lab, realized that almost nobody knows anything about the lab. Clinicians or, or people will ask me, what is exactly clinical pathology? What is that you do there? And when they come, they have this kind of amazing surprise that, oh, is that what you do? That's pretty amazing. Um, so that was kind of a, a very rewarding experience for me and for the people that I met that was greatly surprised about how you can leverage testing laboratory results and uh, to, to do patient care. So after residency, that again, I have a very, very positive experience um, doing clinical pathology. Um, I relocated to, again, to the East Coast for, for fellowship. I did my fellowship at Johns Hopkins, uh, which I also had a great experience because now I learned a lot about uh, apheresis medicine. And apheresis medicine, again, can sound a little bit boring. Once you, saw one, once you saw one procedure, you saw all of them. But actually, when you learn about all the different things that you can do with apheresis, not only about therapeutic apheresis, but there was this um, program about desensitization for kidney transplant, ABO, incompatible kidney transplant desensitization. And there are many centers that are doing that. You learn that actually how you can modulate the immune system and apheresis is part of that to allow something that as incredible as an ABO incompatible solid organ transplant. So definitely, again, transfusion medicine and apheresis medicine have this kind of huge clinical implications and that allows you to work with a variety of, 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 of clinical services. So we work very closely with hematologists, with surgeons, with transplant surgeons, with anesthesiologists, with nephrologists. And 
it's really kind of nice to discuss patients and kind of discuss therapeutic uh, strategies. So that's actually what I think it is so special about transfusion medicine and apheresis. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. And, you know, speaking of people that you met along the way, was there anyone in particular, a mentor or a faculty member who inspired you to go into transfusion medicine? Yes, absolutely. I have to say that I received so much support during all these years and, and also people who inspire me, as you mentioned. Uh, the first one probably that I can mention, it is um, uh, Christine Pham. She was one of my mentors when I was doing research. She was a rheumatologist, actually, and she was the one that introduced me to, again, how you can leverage your lab and, and your findings in the lab to kind of to apply to patient care. And, and I became very interested after working with her to, in, in cell therapy. Uh, during residency, I would say I have several mentors. Wayne Chandler was one of the main mentors. He, he was doing hemostasis and he was the director of, of the coagulation lab, also of the transfusion lab at that time for Harvard Medical Center. And I thought that he was also, he was very inspiring. He would never set or settle down for anything. He always wanted more and kind of showed me the way to, you know, just go look for your answers when you don't get a good answer from either the literature or from your surroundings. Uh, the transfusion medicine faculty from Bloodworks, who was in, at that time the transfusion service for the University of Washington, Washington was extremely, extremely supportive of everything that I wanted to do. And then at uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, my I would say my almost biggest mentor has been Dr. Karen King. She passed away a few years ago, but she has been instrumental. She has been instrumental in my academic career as well. And, and of course, Aaron Pavin, uh, who's still at uh, Johns Hopkins and I'm still in contact with him. And I cannot stop not mentioning, of course, Paul, has, Paul Ness. Uh, Paul Ness has been, uh, again, very, very supportive. But again, sometimes it's um, really difficult to identify one mentor, right? When you have so many people around you and uh, that they are just willing to you know to take risks with you um to make suggestions and then uh you know go with you all the way to you know from an idea to a research to a publication so i have so many people around me to to thank for all the opportunities and all the support that i received oh wow that definitely it definitely takes a village to to raise a, a pathologist so that i'm not I definitely i i agree with the whatever you've said. So uh, if you had to talk to a medical student or an incoming resident and uh, you had to you basically had to sell them transfusion medicine to them, uh, what would you say? Why is it so unique? Why should anyone do transfusion medicine? Yeah, so I would say, again, I think everyone, there is not one perfect, I mean, uh, you know, or one perfect career pathway or one hmm. only option. What I would say is that take the time to explore because I think the main problem about transfusion medicine is that it's under-recognized or that people is not very familiar with it. So the number one thing is, please don't believe me or don't believe anyone to tell you you should do this because that's not how it works or how anyone should work. You need to find your pathway. So what I would say is number one, get, go and get exposed to absolutely everything and make sure that you spend some time in transfusion medicine because you will be surprised. You will be surprised about how often, like every day, we work with anesthesiologists, hematologists, uh, um, uh, surgeons, uh, and we talk about patients and patient care. Uh, many times we go to the pay to the bedside and we talk to patients as well, even for aphoresis. The lab will contact you about, hey, this patient is hemolyzing, and these are the antibodies that I found. What do you think we should continue doing? Uh, how do we prioritize choosing a unit for this patient for transfusion? So definitely you're part of the care team. And I think that's ex extremely exciting. Um, and, and, and again, taking calls is, is quite manageable. Um, I do find it very um, interesting. I find it rewarding when you are called and you are able to provide some consultation and help patients or the clinical team. I think that's, again, extremely rewarding. To summarize, what I would tell a medical student, please go. 
talk to your, uh, whatever you are, go to the transfusion service of that hospital and learn about, about it. Transfusion medicine uh, physicians are extremely friendly. You will see that they are extremely approachable. They will always allow you to make a rotation or to do a rotation in their labs and, and you will be greatly surprised. Yes, that's what I would do, I would say. Thank you so much uh, for that answer. So going one step uh, further to that, what would you say to residents who are interested in transfusion medicine? Are there any re resources that you recommend or any steps that they should be taking, like any societies, uh, anything else that you have in, in mind? Yeah, so the transfusion medicine community is quite small, which on the one hand can, uh, can be, okay, it is small, so that's not good, but actually it's quite positive to be small because there is lots of, we support each other quite a lot. There are a lot of resources and you don't have to be famous to be noticed mm -hmm. or to have some, you know, some leverage to say, hey, I have these ideas. What, what do you think I can do with this? Mm -hmm. So there are different uh, societies that, are, again, are extremely friendly that have like junior memberships or junior positions in their committees and it's very easy to access. Um, and those are AABB, which is the Association for the Ad Ad Advancement of Blood and Biotherapies. That's a mouthful. So AABB, and then the um, uh, ASFA, the American Society for Apheresis Medicine, which again is also extremely friendly with faculty that will support any junior member as well. So AABB and ASFA are the two places to start. And then we have the larger, um, that is not only about transfusion, but it is about pathology. So the College of American Pathologists also have been extremely supportive of my career and my colleagues' careers as well. They do have a committee that is called the TACT Committee, the Transfusion Apheresis Cell Therapy Committee. And they always welcome junior um, members, either medical students, and actually I don't know about medical students, but that's for sure residents and fellows, and um, and what we do is proficiency testing. So we develop testing for ABO typing, antibody identifications, panels, and so on. And it's extremely, extremely informative and educational for all the members that we are there. So those are the, and then the American Society for Clinical Pathology. But uh, those are the main four that I would think that you can go for resources, and that would be extremely uh, informative. Thank you very much, Dr. Pagano. Uh, and I, I would just like to add, because I took boards not too long ago, uh, that uh, resources from ASFA, the ASFA categories particularly, and from the AABB, the, I, I went to both of their websites to check like resources that I, I did actually use during my boards, and those were helpful. So ASFA categories were helpful for AABB, the guidelines for donations and who can donate, what is the deferment period, and all those things. Those are those are frequently asked questions in the board, so they are very high yield. So, so I recommend anyone listening to to think about those things as well. Um, Zoom, do you have any more questions? Uh, no, I just have a comment. I guess uh, it was really fascinating to hear you talk about apheresis for sure, uh, because I don't think a lot of people realize how broad uh, you know the applications can be. So thank you for that. All right, uh, that's our show for today, folks. You can find Dr. Pagano on Twitter. Her Twitter handle is at Monica B. Pagano, P-A-G-A-N-O. And thank you very much for listening to us. If you like the show, please like and subscribe our channels on YouTube, Apple, and other places where we put our podcasts. And we'll be back with another episode soon. Thank you very much.